In this video, we're going to talk about state space models. When you have a dynamic process that is multivariable and you have a linear model for that process, you can rewrite it in this form called a state space model, which is a single matrix equation that represents your multiple scalar equations. So we're going to focus on systems that are linear and multivariable. We will continue to use the blending process as an example. So we have two streams that are coming into a single stirred tank. We're blending them together and we have a single outlet stream. Our control variable in this process is the mass fraction of species A leaving the tank, that is X. Our manipulated variable is W2 and our disturbance variable is from stream one, the flow rate W1. So let's rewrite that in the state space form. So the state space form starts with your time derivatives, dx dt, and we write that as a linear function of those variables that appear in the ddt term, and those are called dynamic states. We can also have additional terms for our process inputs. So the inputs u can include both manipulated variables as well as disturbance variables, and these are called our dynamic states. We also have a second equation in our state space model, which is an algebraic equation, not a differential equation. It's our measurement equation. So our measurements y depend, again linearly, on our states and our inputs. Now in previous videos, we had already written down a linearized model for the blending process. That is the model that we will use, that we will rewrite here. First, we considered the change in the volume in the tank, and these are all in deviation variables. And then our second equation was for the mass fraction of species A in the tank. So this is our multivariable dynamic model for the blending process. The first thing to do in rewriting it into the state space form is to determine what are the vectors x, u, and y. And here, it's important to keep in mind that x is this sort of generic variable for our dynamic states. It's not actually the mass fraction. But here, it should be clear as we go through the notation because our mass fraction is in deviation variables. So that will be referred to as x prime. So first, let's write down our dynamic state as a column vector. And everything in our dynamic state is going to be one of the terms in a DDT. So it's pretty easy to look at our original equations and figure out what should be in this vector x. So that's going to be v prime and x prime because they are both in the DDT terms. They come from the accumulation terms in the balance equation. And next we need to figure out what should be in our input vector, our u vector. So I said that is anything that is either a manipulated variable or a disturbance variable. And so here in the blending process we have w1 prime, w2 prime, and w prime. And then finally, we have our measurements. So this just depends on what we're going to measure. So here in this case, let's assume that we will measure our disturbance variable, w1 prime. So we won't be able to manipulate it, but we will know what it is. And then we will also measure volume in the tank and our control variable, the mass fraction in the tank. Now that we have specified x, u, and y, we can figure out what values to plug into the matrices a, B, C, and D. So we'll have DDT of X. Now X is composed of V prime and X prime. And then we have a matrix A, and that is going to multiply V prime and X prime, our X vector. The first row in the matrix represents our DV prime DT term. So DV prime DT is equal to 10 to the minus 3 times W1 prime plus W2 prime minus W prime. It doesn't actually depend on V prime or x prime. We will have zeros multiplying the v prime and x prime terms. And then in our second equation, we have dx prime dt. And in that case, we do have an x prime term. We do not have a v prime term on the right hand side. So we will have here 0, and we will have negative 4 times 10 to the minus 4 in this spot. And it's really important in specifying these matrices, a here, that we get the dimensions right. So x has two elements, and so we end up with a two by two matrix here. Next, we need to add on our bu term. We have three elements here in u, 
So we need to have three columns in B. And if we look at our first row of B, we have dv prime dt multiplies 10 to the minus 3 times w1 prime, 10 to the minus 3 times w2 prime, and minus 10 to the minus 3 w prime. And then our second row of B corresponds to our dx prime dt equation. That first term, x prime term, already appeared in A, but we do have terms for w1 prime. We have 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6, and the coefficient multiplying w2 prime is negative 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6. And then there is no coefficient multiplying w prime, so we'll just put a zero there. Now that we've specified a and b in our dynamic equation, we can move on to specify our measurement equation, y equals cx plus du. This is algebraic. And this is just specifying mathematically how our measured variables depend on our states and inputs. So this is just specifying the relationship between the measurements, the states, and the inputs in a mathematical way. We do need to be very careful to get our dimensions right so that we can perform our matrix multiplications. C here is going to have two columns that can multiply v prime and x prime and three rows for the three measurements. So if we start with w1 prime, that doesn't depend on v prime or x prime, but it is equal to our first input, w1 prime. So we put one and then zero, zero. Now v prime is equal to our first state variable, so we put a one there and a zero, and then we have zeros in all the remaining positions. And finally, x prime is equal to the second state variable, and does not depend on the inputs. Now we have fully specified our state space model. We have matrix A here, B, C, and D. So now we have a single matrix equation that represents the input-output dynamic behavior of our system.